Identifying and prioritizing key resources and capabilities is yet another crucial component of determining one's entrepreneurial strategy. So today, we'll examine the assets that were essential to Zappos.com's founding and success. The dot-com boom of the late 1990s saw the emergence of specialized e-commerce retailers across a wide range of categories. In 1999, Nick Swinburne's experience with the early internet led him to consider various online business opportunities, and he was quickly drawn to the shoe market because it is one of the most profitable segments within the fashion industry. After discovering the immense opportunity of an online shoe marketplace, Swinburne began turning his idea into a reality. However, he quickly realized that he himself lacked some of the key resources and capabilities that would be essential to the venture's inception. So now, we'll walk through an exercise that would have facilitated Swinburne's identification and prioritization of these key assets decades ago. Please note that I'll be outlining the exercise from Swinburne's perspective prior to his recruitment of early teammates. And as I go through the process, I'll highlight his early insights and explain how they've led to the recruitment of each specific team member. So first, we'll start by identifying a list of key resources and capabilities required to create value and determine those critical resources and capabilities that may be difficult to develop or acquire. To create an online shoe marketplace, the first thing that you would need is extensive shoe inventory. Swinburne definitely lacked this resource, and he didn't have the capital to develop or acquire the inventory himself, so this first box will remain unmarked. And as we move forward to early hires, remember that we'll be completing this exercise from Swinburne's perspective prior to recruiting anyone. And since there is no hires yet, this entire column will remain untouched throughout the exercise. Under the Can Make column, if we consider Swinburne's early idea, which was simply an online shoe marketplace, we can note that although it may be difficult, he could in fact try to make a new line of footwear and sell that online. And of course, an alternative to making these shoes would simply be purchasing them, so we can buy. And ultimately, Swinburne decided that he would indeed go ahead and buy these shoes, um, and in order to do so, he needed sufficient capital. So in 1999, he approached angel investors Alfred Lin and Tony Shea, who contributed $2 million to his efforts. Another resource or capability that's essential to building a successful online shoe marketplace is some type of early internet or e-commerce expertise or experience. Luckily, Swinburne did possess this expertise as he worked for autoweb.com in its early days. And moving on to the can make column, we can note that this expertise could be developed through research and experimentation, so it can be made, so to speak. And alternatively, Swinburne could acquire a teammate with the knowledge, so it can also be bought. And looking back at resources and capabilities, this is an online shoe marketplace, so we would also want some footwear industry expertise. Unfortunately, Swinburne does not have this relevant expertise, but as we've just noted, this expertise could be developed through research and experimentation, and we could acquire a teammate with this knowledge. So it can be made and it can be bought. And one final key capability that Zappos.com would use to create value for customers was extraordinary customer service. This essential capability may not be immediately obvious, but it would be key to distinguishing Zappos from its e-commerce counterparts. So we'll explore this point a little bit more in later portions of the exercise. Moving across, we can note that Swinburne did not possess this capability, but it could be made or developed by hiring in-house representatives or bought through customer service call outsourcing. So now that we have identified four key resources and or capabilities that are required for value creation, we'll move on to prioritizing two of these assets that are most essential, or at least worth exploring a bit more. Given that Swinburne kind of decided that he would buy his inventory early on, and given his early internet experience, I believe that the two most valuable assets to continue exploring would be, would be footwear industry expertise and extraordinary customer service. So here we can go ahead and note that footwear industry expertise is essential to the venture's long-term success because relevant knowledge of the industry supply chain and trends will help the early team sort out logistics. If the venture starts off with this knowledge, they'll know the best inventory suppliers to contact, they'll know how much to purchase, and they'll know where to get the best quality inventory from. So it'll really give them a head start with experimentation. And now, revisiting extraordinary customer service, 
we can note that this is essential to the venture's long-term success because during the early 2000s, most online retailers wouldn't even list a customer service number on the website. And those that had customer service generally outsourced calls, and that created a really impersonal shopping experience. And once Zappos.com's early team identified this status quo, they knew that offering exceptional customer service would make them superior and that it would ultimately translate into success. You know, customers would be more willing to purchase shoes online if returns, exchanges, and complaints would be readily addressed. So Zappos would go above and beyond to offer that customer experience. Now that we've decided what to explore further, we can move on to section two. Here, we'll be assessing the advantages and disadvantages associated with internal development versus external acquisition. So continuing with our first critical resource, footwear industry expertise, we can note what we've identified previously, which was that the venture is capable of developing this resource by pursuing research and experimentation within the industry and learning as it progresses. But a potential challenge of this learn as you go approach is the fact that something like this is likely time consuming, costly, and really unforgiving if a serious mistake is made. But alternatively, the venture could acquire this resource by simply hiring someone that already has the relevant experience and someone that can provide those crucial insights immediately. Not only would this be less time consuming, but it could be less costly in the long run. Moving one step further, we'll have to acknowledge that challenges and disadvantages of acquiring these resources would be the cost of finding and hiring someone with such profound knowledge. Finding someone like this will probably require a fair amount of networking and research. And once we do find who we need, it'll probably take a fair amount of negotiations to get them on board. So we'll have to bear in mind that this faster, somewhat easier approach will come at certain costs. And moving forward to our critical capability, extraordinary customer service, We'll reiterate that the venture is capable of developing this capability by hiring in-house customer service reps and ensuring that they are upheld to Zappos.com's extraordinary customer service standards. But this also offers a challenge and a disadvantage because depending on who's hired, some level of training will be required. And ultimately this approach could be more expensive because a larger team would be required in the long run. On the other side of things, we noted before that the venture could buy or acquire this key capability through customer service outsourcing. You know, they could be like everybody else, but we did note that Zappos wants to be extraordinary with regards to customer service. So this offers its own challenge. Most outsourcing companies are impersonal, so it'll be difficult to find something that really is extraordinary. So we've weighed the pros and cons of making or buying our critical resources and capabilities. Um, so we'll move forward to step three, where we'll explore our ecosystem. The goal of this section is to identify players within the ecosystem who could facilitate development of, or give us access to, these two critical resources and capabilities. So starting with footwear industry expertise, we can identify a few sources of this resource. If we think about potential hires and early teammates, Maybe we can hire executives from leading department stores to be a part of the early team or individuals with experience in the industry. And this could come in the form of small shoe store owners, business people who've worked for companies within the industry, or really anyone else that could offer that knowledge that we're looking for. Moving on to potential investors, people who could provide capital in this space would be venture capital firms with an e-commerce or fashion focus and angel investors who have experience in the footwear industry. Continuing forward, potential advisors, mentors, and accelerators could be executives from leading department stores again. Uh, they could be an early teammate or an advisor or mentor. And ideally, we'd be able to find a fashion startup accelerator that offers some type of training, mentorship, and investment for entrepreneurs innovating in the clothing retail industry. And it's important to note that that would be available today, but it would be pretty unlikely to find in 1999. And so that brings us to our final box here, which is supply chain and other ecosystem players. And here you really wanna go ahead and think outside of the box to identify any stakeholder or other player in the industry that could have that knowledge. In the footwear industry, that might come from a shoe brand itself 
or a shoe manufacturer. And we can probably gain that expertise through a partnership. So zooming out at this, we see that we've created a pretty extensive list of players that could provide what we're looking for. We've listed some general and somewhat vague examples, but when you go through this for your own venture, you're gonna to wanna to be sure to do your research and really find specific examples that will fall into each category. When Swinmer went through this process, he identified and then went on to recruit Nordstrom Footwear executive Fred Mosler to join as the first full-time employee. And this turned out to be a wonderful decision because Mosler's involvement was crucial to the venture's early experimentation and ultimate success. He proposed that Zappos invest the bulk of their remaining financial resources in buying inventory and this decision went on to help the team determine whether or not their combination of in-stock inventory and customer-focused experiences would gain traction. So identifying, prioritizing, and acquiring footwear industry expertise proved to be a crucial contributor to Zappos.com's ultimate success. So now we'll go through the same process for extraordinary customer service. Potential hires and early teammates that possess this capability could be well-trained, experienced customer service representatives. And if we're looking for extraordinary customer service, we might have to leave the scope of e-commerce and footwear and move into different industries like hospitality. Maybe we can acquire an executive from a leading hospitality company or a luxury clothing company that's known for its exceptional customer experiences. Potential investors could come in the form of angels with hospitality experience. And if we move down, potential advisors or mentors in this space could be executives from leading companies in the hospitality industry. Uh, again, those could be hires or advisors. Uh, and we can also look for marketing and HR professors who have knowledge in the space, or even heads of call centers that have experience with high phone call volume and the infrastructure required to uphold that volume. And finally, looking at supply chain and other ecosystem players, we can note that customer service outsourcing does remain an option, despite it being somewhat unideal for the extraordinary services that Zappos is trying to provide. When Zappos.com's early team thought through this process in the early 2000s, they realized that relocating the company from Silicon Valley to Las Vegas would enable access to this capability because in Vegas, they could pay an attractive wage to attract hospitality workers from nearby hotels. So that concludes section three of the exercise. And now, as you go through this, you'll want to determine the key capabilities that the firm should possess and the specific resources that will enable experimentation. We should also note that an organization's resources and capabilities are the means by which value is created and captured. So a failure to identify, prioritize, and source these key assets is synonymous with the venture's demise. And thus, these choices should be made deliberately, and I hope this video facilitates that process for you.